craft luxury. It is the world's fifth largest mobile company. It's revolutionized the telecom market in India. Its low cost structure has brought down prices to the lowest in the world. It is Bharti Airtel. Founded in 1976 on a loan of 20,000 rupees, Bharti has transformed from a bicycle parts manufacturer to a conglomerate with a presence in telecom, financial services, retail and foods. Bharti's business projects have been transformational and it's partnered with big global firms like Singtel and Walmart while at it. The group has a presence in 21 countries and a market capitalization of $25 billion. He's a man with an appetite for risk and one of India's most aggressive entrepreneurs. But Sunil Mittal is clear, he wants to be known more than just India's telecom czar. He wants to be known for creating a lasting and sustainable business and for creating shared values in the community he services. Communities in small towns and lost villages. Communities that probably have access to mobile telephony but not the essentials. The Party Foundation was set up a decade ago to bridge this gap. After some experimentation, the Mittal brothers in 2006 decided to focus the foundation's efforts on education and skill development. Of the 134 million children who enrolled in schools in 2009, 53 million dropped out because their families couldn't afford it or they simply weren't interested in cluttered classrooms where the real learning is little. But in Chogaban village near Amritsar, Komal is walking into a different school and into a different classroom. One that is bright and friendly. One in which learning is interactive and creative. Komal is just one of the 30,000 children who are part of the Satya Bharti school movement. A movement that is consciously focused on bringing the girl child and children from the socially backward classes into its fold. 47% of all the children in Satya Bharti schools are girls. This number in most cases being higher than the girl-boy ratio in the region. Let me start by asking, you're a first generation entrepreneur. While philanthropy has been part of large, old, traditional Indian business families, for a first generation entrepreneur to think of setting up a foundation almost a decade ago was a surprising move. Why did you think about setting up the Bharti Foundation? Well, there's a deep connect that we've always had as uh, children growing up with the society. As you know, I come from a family which had deep uh, political ties and uh, public life was a, a way of growing up. So we were very clear once we would be in a position to do something mm. uh, in the society and do some interventions, we'll do it. And indeed, yes, when 10 years back when we said Bharti Foundation and like many other things, we said it'll be 200 crores endowment. That was much more than we could have at least at that point in time uh, thought of putting in. But we did and uh, finally we have actually put in uh, 200 crores and more. And uh, the work that has come out of that mm. is quite satisfying. How essential is it for business leaders at this point in time, especially given the fact that we have these wide differences that exist in Indian society, to actually be able to think about things like this, to think about financial inclusion, to think about education, healthcare. How critical is it for Indian businesses to strategize on these fronts at this point in time? I think I will quote uh, uh, from the Prime Minister's speech in 2007, where he said that the vulgar display yeah. of the wealth hurts the sensibilities of this poor nation. Mm. I really agree with that position. Mm. Uh, as we create wealth or any business uh, house that creates wealth, they have a responsibility not only not to display uh, their wealth in a, a fashion which is uh, hurting the sentiments, but mm. more importantly start contributing in a very big way. Mm. You spoke about the old business houses and I, my view is uh, Tata's and Birla's, yeah. uh, Tata's uh, continue to do it in a very big way even right. now, uh, and the new generation entrepreneurs 
have started to do this in a big way. So you saw Infosys, yeah. Bharti is doing it, Wipro is doing it. ACL is doing in it. In between, yeah. we didn't see much happening. Now people ask, why is India hmm. not, uh, you know, India incorporated not doing enough? Uh, I have really a uh, very clear uh, proposition for that. One, I think, is newfound wealth. Yeah. People are still not very comfortable. Uh, under their skin that this is here to stay, they'll be okay. So they are a little scared. So amass as much as you can for yourself. I think so. You know, when you come from, uh, you know, poverty uh, uh, struck background, huh. you tend to eat more. Yeah. And similarly, uh, when you have come from, you know, difficult situation, mm. you don't have the comfort of parting with your wealth. So it's the legacy of insecurity that's not really, or that's constraining you from sharing your wealth with everybody. Correct. Else. And as you get more comfortable, you will start seeing more and more companies mm. joining this bandwagon. The other part I think uh, that uh, holds Indians back from doing what many in the Western world do is leaving all the money for the children. Hmm. So people here will you know, uh, uh, cut down a meal for themselves but ensure that the children are taken care of. Most wealth is uh. left for the next generation. Uh. Whereas in the US at 18 or 20, small amounts of money, the car for the children uh. and most of the money then goes into building libraries, hospitals, universities and if you see Carnegie Endowment, yeah. if you see uh, Brookings, everything has come from endowments, you know. That is not fascinating. Is that the way forward for you as well? Yeah. I'm inspired by those. I mean, I'm inspired by the stories of Rockefeller, Carnegie. Hmm. As you know, I sit on the Carnegie Endowment board in Washington. Hmm. And it's incredible how they left most of the, of the wealth hmm. for public causes. Hmm. And I think that has to happen here. So if you ask me, what is Bharti Foundation's vision? To be one day known like a Carnegie Endowment or a Ford Foundation or a Rockefeller Foundation. Hmm. And we have started, I think, well. Hopefully, we will end well as well. The Bharti Foundation, since 2006, has set up 236 schools in five states. The schools have been set up on land leased to the foundation by village panchayats. Panchayats that at first looked for the ulterior motive, but have since come around. The government who is acknowledging the work of the foundation and is now partnering with it to provide free uniforms and midday meals. Let me ask you about the Satya Bharti schools that you have, over 200 schools that you've co-opted as part of your program. What has been the big challenge and what has been the big learning for you? It gives me immense pleasure, you know, when you reach out to 30,000 plus uh, underprivileged children who probably would never have gone to school yeah. and forget about getting quality education. Um, I remember, I mean, the earlier days when we started, there were challenges of getting lands from the panchayat on, on these bases. And I remember the day when uh, I had to interact with over 100 sarpanches in Ludhiana right. uh, just to share with them what we wanted to do because right. they had the fear that probably you know, we'll go and put up our towers and so on and so forth. So they thought this was a land grab exercise. Yeah, I mean, you know how the local vested interests start uh, vitiating the environment. Hmm. But the, the most uh, encouraging thing was that immediately after the two hour session I had with them, about 10 people walked up to me. They said, forget about leaves, we'll, we're ready to give you donation 8, 10 acres tomorrow morning. Okay. Start the school. Okay. And I think that was the uh, beginning. But I think more importantly, it is bringing a silent change. Hmm. Not a silent, I would say a silent and a significant change in those villages. When I go to the villages, the community is, is up there requesting uh, for the senior secondary school to mm. come in their village so that their children don't have to travel mm. 7, 8, 10 kilometers uh, uh, outside. Mm. Because ultimately for every 8 or 10 uh, primary schools, we are going to set up one s senior secondary school. Mm. In fact, the first one is already in launched in, in Chogama, Amritsar. Mm. If I look at what is uh, the benefits to the uh, village community, to the children, the children are getting high quality education. The teachers are uh, uh, coming from the local villages and nearby villages. Mm. 1,200 teachers are on roads mm. of Bharti Foundation today. Mm. Uh, the, the recent results which came from Class 5 board, in Punjab the highest percentage is 97.8%. Uh, okay. Haryana is 98.7%. Okay. UP is 98%. Neem Rana, Rajasthan is 95%. Sivak Ganga. So I mean if I look at this, mm. who would have thought that these children would be hitting these numbers? Mm. But, uh, but clearly, there is, high, there is hidden potential, there is hidden talent mm. uh, within every human. I think it's the opportunity which they uh, fail to get or if they get, they can always come and perform. <laughs> Canada, 
Specially trained to make sure the classrooms are interactive and fun. For every 26 students, there's one teacher. This is well above the government school average of 40 years to 1. Teachers are continuously put through training and feedback, but every class has its challenges. We are actually investing a lot in the teacher in terms of training, in terms of giving them experience, in terms of getting them aligned to the program and our philosophy. And year two onwards, actually the payback for the program starts. But the bright ones, obviously when they get greater opportunities than they've learned here, they go away and you know, uh, it's, it's sad to lose them. And uh, so constantly we need to work on, you know, keeping them connected with our vision, with our mission, with what they are contributing back to society. Challenges. Vijay Chadda, the CEO of Bharti Foundation, along with his 100-member team, engage with the community to ensure the foundation's activities become part of their daily life. There are over 100 people now in the foundation, so it's a proper office, proper people. And uh, the outcome of that is uh, 30,000 children studying in wonderful schools. Hmm. You have a code of conduct that uh, exists not just for the Bharti Foundation but also for Bharti Enterprises in that sense. How, does, how do you make the connect between what Bharti Enterprises does and what the Bharti Foundation does? Code of conduct is of course for our own business uh, our piece where everybody including me we sign at the end of the year any gift that I've received, a phone or anything else yeah. or if uh, foreign travel being sponsored by anyone. Yeah. So all these things are given out and this every employee must sign it and that's why I think we've been able to keep our, our company clean, mm. uh, high credibility mm. uh, but that also then flows into uh, the foundation in a sense that everybody is committing to putting some resources into mm. foundation whether it's one day salary, one day of time given to foundation. Mm. So there is a, in that sense when a company is pristine and clean and also has the will to serve mm. the society in a very credible way. Was that the decision to actually start the Bharti Foundation and not carry out all of these initiatives through Bharti Enterprises for instance? Yeah, I think we thought foundation uh, needs to attract the people who are having the mentality of serving the society. So typically mm. those people who are working in NGOs are comfortable. The people in Bharti Enterprises at the end of the day, mm. uh, if there is a conflict between their work and foundation, they will end, end up you know, executing yeah. their work. Yeah. So you have to carve out something where the mindset had to be different. Mm. You know what, the foundation is actually looking after your philanthropic interests in that sense. As a brand, and all of your businesses have credible front-end brands in that sense, it is important for the customer to respect the brand, for the customer to actually be able to connect. So in that sense, don't these values then translate into the way that you actually execute and go about strategizing for your core businesses. But in our case, if you look at it, we are deep in villages mm. where we are not truly selling too many of our products other than mo mobile telephony which is available everywhere. Mm. It is with the sense that going to villages which have no schools or very few schools right. and provide free education, computers, uniform, books, midday meal. Mm. And we are not really trying to leverage that work mm. uh, to say oh, Airtel has uh, developed a very strong aura around it. Mm. We are doing it because the heart is there. Consolidating their presence in primary education, Bharti Foundation is now looking to scale up. This is the Bharti Foundation's first senior secondary school. Inaugurated three months back, this other school in Chogaban works on the public-private partnership model with the Punjab government. Unlike its primary schools where the entire capital cost is borne by the foundation for its secondary schools, Satya Bharti has split the cost with the government that runs the schools on its terms. Affiliated to the CBSE board, this school places emphasis on English learning to make the children part of the mainstream. Uh, different backgrounds, like uh, government schools are also the government school se jo bacche aaye hain unka english ka jo level hai wo bahut low hai bachcho ne abhi sikhna shuru nahi kiya hai to 
बेसिकली हमारा जो मेन जैसे मैथ्स बच्चे कर लेते हैं पंजाबी बच्चे कर लेते हैं बट इंग्लिश में वो पीछे रह जाते हैं और हमारा जो सारा सिलेबस है वो इंग्लिश बेस्ड ही है तो उसके लिए हम लोगों ने रिमीडियल शुरू किया है बिल्कुल जीरो लेवल से शुरू किया है ताकि बच्चे जो हैं वो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता बच्चे पिक कर रहे हैं the foundation is to help underprivileged children realize their potential ikta yaara ke ban da sachi gal hu te kan da ve naal pangala din da acche school ki hum teacher bhi bahut acche hain hum bahut achhi tarah se padhate bhi hain hum taar bhi karte hain mama aur mera school mein fun hai mama हम वो मई फ्रेंड है हम हम पढ़ने में वो कॉन्फिडेंस रखते हैं फाउंडेशन प्लान टू ओपन ट्वेंटी फाइव सच अदर स्कूल ओवर द नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स So the Bharti Foundation has just completed 10 years. What is the next decade's vision as far as your concern for the foundation? Every village I have gone into during the last 18 24 months, the panchayat, the community wants their children to study right through the school. While we started this with a primary school uh, primary education uh, vision, but very soon I realized that you know after class 5 the children will be back on the crossroads. Right. Either they go back into the uh, government school system where the mm. quality of delivery is uh, is wanting, mm. and for the private schools, their parents will not be able to uh, provide education. Mm. Uh, and not only that, I mean, if you see these thirty thousand children are being provided uniform, mm. books, sports, mm. a midday meal, mm. and we don't charge a rupee. Mm. But more importantly, the sarpanches are now asking the government teachers. and they are holding them accountable why don't they come on time yeah. why don't they teach the children yeah. and why is uh, uh, education not being uh, delivered in the way it should be uh, so so clearly from my perspective the next 3 years will be putting up the senior secondary schools and once these are up every school will be a vocational training center mm. we will provide vocational training in class 11 and 12 so that every child becomes employable, employable. and uh, now i am going back to the government and they said that you are teaching our children free of cost mm. what can we do for you i said well the, the, the least you can do is provide books provide uniforms and a mid day meal which you provide for the government school children yeah. and i am not charging anything i am providing free education so more more and more this is going to be uh, a program where we will seek uh, government help on this on senior secondary it is going to be public private partnership Uh, the the Punjab one has come up under the Adarsh model uh, school, where the the government is giving 10, 15 acres of land. They have already given us six schools. So one got launched, and another five will be ready in the next 12, 15 months. And then they share 50% of capital expenditure and 70% of recurring uh, operational expenditure. So I think, to my mind, the private sector needs to come forward in a more uh, a pragmatic and uh, and proactive way, because if this country has to move ahead. and if we are talking of uh, uh, realizing the value of our human right. asset education and skill building are the two areas which need to be focused uh, on priority so as education will never be a business and uh, therefore whatever we do will have to be done through grants and uh, contribution from the group and friends Business and by default, the industry. Bharti founded Positi of trained telecom engineers, young minds with ideas and innovations to take the telecom business forward. To bridge this gap, the Bharti School of Telecommunication Technology and Management was set up in partnership with IIT Delhi and IIT Bombay. Over the last 10 years, thousands of young men and women have studied in these high-tech wireless labs, picking up master's degrees and PhDs. What can we expect? You've already completed a decade. What can we expect in the next decade? Because you've got about 230 odd primary schools that you are currently looking after, mostly in north of India, in Punjab. Where do you actually see your education initiatives going forward? Uh, we will get to 100,000 uh, children under cover of these educational programs in the next 36 months. We are at 30,000; it's fast growing now. So first, we have to come to 100,000, which mm. needs a lot of strength. We'll have yeah. 6,000 teachers. Hundreds of schools, uh, both primary and secondary, and then we'll see. We can then upscale it to a grand university, 
but we also have done things in the higher education. Uh, IIT, Delhi and, uh, Delhi and Bombay have had uh, massive contributions from Bharti. Yeah. In fact, Delhi's IIT, uh, Bharti School of Telecom Technology is very well regarded now. Mm. Uh, we have uh, endowed a very big institute in Mohali for That's the public Indian policy, School Indian yeah. School of Business. And on the public policy, India doesn't have a big institute in public policy. Yeah. So that will be coming up hopefully in the next two years. But what has been the big challenge really, especially you know when you are talking about dealing with education in the primary sector, uh, because the government regulates education and you've tried to partner with the government in most instances. What's been the big challenge there? I think there, there's a lot of good news. For the last year of the struggle, we've had uh, issues when we went and opened villages, uh, schools and villages. Uh, other government school teachers have come and protested, there have mm -hmm. been issues, but I think we've overcome that. Now we have people lining up to say, can you please open up a school in our village? Mm -hmm. Then we have That's our, because they realize the quality of education is a lot better. Absolutely. Much yeah. better, facilities are much better, and commitment is there. And now we have a minister in uh, Kapil Sibyl who is very progressive. He wants to have massive changes in the area of education. Okay. Combined with the Prime Minister's vision in the area of education, I think we are on the threshold of major breakthroughs in the laws of this country around education. So could we possibly see a Bharti University being set up anytime soon and now you can also bring in foreign partners and collaborate with them? For us, education will never be a business. And uh, therefore, whatever we do will have to be done through grants and uh, contribution from the group and friends. And I don't know whether foreign universities will want to come in for the philanthropy part of it. Yeah. But we will bring them in at our cost and price, but it will not be a foreign university. It should be a Bharti university, funded and endowed by uh, the contributions that we will make. You know, a lot of what you're doing on the philanthropic front is also encouraging uh, an atmosphere of trust with the communities that you hope to, hope to service and the communities that you're already servicing. As you go global at this point in time, you've already gone into Africa. Will this be a big part of your strategy there as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Africa actually uh, has a very well, uh, you know, conceived program around philanthropy. In some sense, better than India. Mm -hmm. Why most, would you say that? I think most of the MNCs that have gone there have uh, created an environment of contribution through digging of wells, water supply, water and of course project. a very, very strict policy on affirmative action. And as well that. Uh, but you know, these MNCs are quite used to doing a lot of uh, contribution to societies in their own home countries. It becomes a part and parcel of what they do. For us, this will come natural, and we are again said, let's do just the same mm. education, unless we are you know, uh, compelled into doing something else in a sense that if somebody else says, you need to do this for us, we'll do it. Mm. But education, again, for poor children in Africa will become, and Bharti Foundation is a bedrock, mm. uh, can easily then replicate itself for African uh, projects over a period of time. Next week on The Heart of Business, we look at how Bharti's new businesses are looking to create value for the community.